That was the Pogue. So, welcome this morning to Math Live. So, first of all, we're going to do, uh, well, not first of all, we're going to do community frequency this morning. But let's just have a little recap on what we've learned this week so far. So, have, going back to these, um, these questions here, multiplying out brackets, otherwise known as expanding brackets. Okay, so let's have a quick look at these, a quick look at the factorising, and we'll get started on community frequency 1. We've got community frequency 2 to, on Friday to back this up with. So, looking at these questions, alright, going for number 3, 3m plus 2. So, on this process, we're multiplying out. So nice and easy numbers. We can do that in our head quite easily. But remember that as these um, expressions become more difficult with, say, minuses and x's and y's and uh, squares, it's always good to uh, rewrite this as a grid. Makes things nice and easy. Okay. 3 times m is 3m. 3 twos are 6. So that's expanding, going that way. And then if we go the other way, ding, it's the reverse process. So what's that called? Have it in your head. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And that is a factorizing. Thank you very much. Factorizing. Okay, so welcome this morning. We've got Lydia. We've got Alfie. Okay, and welcome to Mr. Tate as well. You're all very, very welcome in Maths Live Community Frequency. Okay, so that's expanding factorising. So, um, as we get more difficult, let's have a look at 15. Negative 7, I'll, re I'll write it out in the grid straight away. Negative 4, 8, negative 1. Make a grid. Okay, so I'm looking at that one there. Copied out, made a grid. 7, 4 is a 28. Okay, now we've got two minuses multiplying together. So that's going to make a plus. Okay. Um, and also, 7 ones are 7, and we've got 2 minuses multiplying together, so that's making a plus. Okay, so our answer, 28a plus 7. So very often I find this, sometimes the more complicated question, actually things cancel, break down, um, and the numbers become a lot easier. So I always say um, that, you know, if it looks easy, um, it probably isn't. And if it looks complicated, it's probably much easier than it looks. Anyway, let's move on. Okay, so, um, yeah, that's uh, that's multiplying out, that's expanding. So let's have a look at the other sheet that we were using this week. And this is factorising, so this is the reverse process. Straight on to a green now, because we've already practised these. So green, um, here we go. So let's have a go at, put a minus in A. Eh? Um, 9x plus 6x4. 9x plus 6x, the power of 4, I should say. So that's that question there. Okay, so this time we're going to factorize it. Remember that sometimes expressions need to be written with brackets. Sometimes they need to be written in an expanded form. It all depends on the maths that we're covering. So let's take this expression here. So looking at the two did numbers, the 9 and the 6, we need numbers that go into 9 and 6. We need numbers that divide 9 and 6. So 1 will divide 9 and 6. 2 won't. 2 will, will divide 6, but not 9. 3 will. 4, 4 5, 6. 6 will there, but not 9 there. So it's definitely 3. And remember, to fully factorise, we've got to get the highest number that divides these two. Um, so, so you will lose a mark if you don't find the highest number. So 3 is the 1. So we put 3 on the outside of the brackets. And then we need a number to make the 9. Okay. So what do I multiply 3 by to make a 9? Okay. So that's right. 3 3s are 9. 3 3s are 9. Okay. So, we do need an x for that part. We're actually filling in that number there and that number. So, 3, 3 is a 9, and we've got an x, so that makes that um, that first part, first um, part of the first term, first term of the expression. So, now we're on to the second term of the expression. So, um, oh, sorry, um, actually, I've, I've, I've made a slight error here. 
okay um, because we've got an X that's common as well so we need an X there as well so I'm going to rewrite that out again sorry about that folks it is a 3 there 3 3 is a 9 X but we do need an X in because it's common all right so just for a second then can anybody out there in um, in internet land can you tell me what term would go there now don't worry about putting the power in just put the power in at the end and I'll work it out um, because it's a bit tricky to format on on Facebook so um, yeah let's see if you can get the value that goes there we've got to make a 6x to the power of 4 we've already got a 3x what goes there first question of the day 30 seconds brilliant so thank you Lydia Rumsey we've got a 2 there okay so that's fantastic so that makes the 6 okay what about the x to the power of four okay thank you very much Lydia Monks yes that is correct I love how you've done the power of that of that three as well with a little she's put a little kind of I don't know what they're called hash thing I don't know symbol so that is actually the maths way of writing power in on terms of a keyboard so um, yeah power of three so 2x the power of three and remember that w when we multiply these out you add the powers so very quickly um, I would advise you to do this if you've got enough time in GCSE doesn't take long at all three threes and nine X you just going you're working backwards you, this is a check now three twos are six and then we've got x3 add the one is four when we multiply powers remember that we 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 take the power and we add it we've got to have the same base number though that is critical right that's brilliant okay so that's revision from what we've been learning so far right you will have those of you that have joined us earlier might would have seen this sheet of paper okay so there's a couple of things I want to point out here. All right, so running total is where it's at. Okay, peace to all frequency, stay safe, add numbers. So although they're a bit of a joke, there's a couple of important things to think about here, okay, that I want to identify. Community frequency, running total. Okay, frequency, okay, I just kind of put that in, but it's just the term frequency, what is it? Frequency means the numbers in that category number of people number of items in that category okay um, it's basically numbers really and this one add numbers so the two important things here is we, we, we're going to be adding numbers running total of the frequency adding the frequencies as we're going along that's what community frequency was, is all about so we take the frequencies and we add them as we're going along okay so let's jump on to some questions I think that's the easiest way to go with this now let I must point out that we're not going into massive details with community frequency one we're just going to concentrate on a basic graph and a basic um, how to work them out just for today okay um, and then tomorrow uh, sorry Friday we're going to be looking at um, the more complicated parts of this which includes the interquartile range lowest quartile median okay and, and possibly a few percentiles so concentrating now on these questions so this is a typical um, a question uh, part a question of uh, GCSE okay um, it's not worth going to be worth loads of marks probably two marks but it's nice and easy to set up and we shouldn't be getting these questions wrong now let me just copy these numbers out because the camera is a little bit blurry and it makes it easier to see so these are our frequencies okay all right remember I'm just going over these I'm not doing it I haven't changed them I'm just going over them They're the same just so that you can see in the clearer okay so we've got a cop we've got to complete this table uh, by the way in G in WJC very often you're gonna have a that's all you're gonna be given so you do have to add on the column anyway okay in which case WJC question I might want to add that on to the end of the whole the whole table uh, with CF community frequency so going back to our um, initial sheet our title page for today it said running total okay 
add the numbers okay and the frequency frequency add the frequencies but we do it as a constant rate you know um, we do it um, adding them up at each stage at each part at, e at each interval okay these are called class intervals so at each interval we're going to add these up so let's do it on here and then we'll transfer the the numbers on here so the first class interval is five we've only got five people so far so five people goes there now that's nice and easy it's just the same number and that's just because it's the first one now the second one is going to be a running total of these two class intervals so what we're going to put there is five add eight five add eight okay now I'm not going to ask you to write that down but have it in your head because uh, it's nice and easy I'm going to ask you to do a few other ones in a minute five add sorry five add eighteen not five or eight five add eighteen so that comes to twenty three twenty three okay so if that's twenty three all right we're going to work out the next one now okay so the next one is going to be five add eighteen add twelve now what we can do make this a little bit easier is instead of doing 5 add 18 first we've already got that so we can do 5 add 18 is 23 so what we need is 23 and 12 okay and that's all those three numbers added together but a little shortcut 23 add 12 so that's going to be 35 right folks okay two numbers type them into the comment box please so we've got that number to do there and that number to do there so type them into the comment box okay give you 30 seconds to do that off you go Okay, so answers are coming in now. That's brilliant. So 39 we've got for this one here. And come on, Alfie. Yeah, yes, we've got it. 39.40. That's brilliant. Well done, guys. Okay, so 39.40. Okay, brilliant. So got that running total going. Okay, and all it is, I'm not going to fill this in actually because all it is is now is just putting them numbers in there. Oh, they're the same but we'll stick with the same or oh, the same um same table it's just a bit easier okay folks so on to the next one then similar fashion we just do two of these and then that'll take us into just um doing the um looking at doing one of the graphs okay so same idea again here so using a ruler, it's always better to use a ruler if you can. It makes it neater. And if you've got, if it's neat, it's easy to follow. CF community frequency. Everybody knows CF's community frequency. Okay, so let's get started on this then, folks. Okay, so the first one's going to be 95. Okay, so now I'm going to add those two together. All right, five add nothing is five. Nine add nine is eighteen. That's hundred and eighty. Because we're at place value times ten up. One eight five. You, sometimes um, this is a calculator question as well, so you can be getting your calculator out and filling these in. Um, next one. 185 add oh sorry yeah so we can add them all together like that 5 add 5 is 10 180 190 to uh, 220 but another way of doing this would be to add that one and that one together which is the same thing because those two make that anyway 220 okay and that will leave you to do the next two um, I'll just mark them in there so you can see them forgot to do that earlier 
it's just a little bit clearer so we've got a 15 there and a 5 there so can you write two numbers for me please um, uh, to tell me what goes in at those two positions there okay answers are coming in now I won't tell you what they are yet so you can type them in so what I want you to do is I want you to write in type in the comment box what goes in that box we've got 220 15 to add on and then a 5 to add on so waiting for some answers to come through five four three two one that's correct okay so a couple of answers coming in so we've got two three five and two forty brilliant so that's the first part then so getting the community frequency is a matter of doing a running total with these frequencies going all the way along until you get to the end okay now this number which I should point out the last number here is also the number of people in the survey okay so this is about heights of bushes so number of bushes in the survey so there's 40 bushes so this number here matches up with 40 there. Uh, very often in GCSE, they give you the total number of people at the start anyway. So um, you can make a, a check between those two values. Going back to this second question, it says 240 at the start there. So you've got a little check there, 240 in the survey, 240 in the survey. Now, folks, that's the main thing I want you to learn today is... Um, is, is to work out those community frequencies if you don't take anything else from this lesson apart from you've learned that you add up the total that you do a running total for the community frequencies we've 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 learned an awful lot two marks sorted okay but we will just cover very quickly what we do next with these so lots of questions to answer so here's a here's a typical uh, GCSE question now although that's a GCSE question in its own right as I said before it's probably not worth that many marks two marks probably but having said that two marks is you is really important to get right so let's go on to this question here okay so um, first of all I'll mark on 44 56 mark on these numbers here so you can clearly see what they are okay so this is more typical of GCSE now okay so the a part would be um, fill in the community frequency um, table and then the B part would be draw the graph and then the C part which we're doing on Friday would be work out the interquartile range so let's not worry about interquartile range today that's Friday's job so let's have a quick inspection of these numbers okay now just so you know that um, we can use these all right calculators very often this is on a calculator paper not always but very often it is so 44 add 44 on the first one 44 add 56 on the second one if, you, if it is a calculator question it makes it really easy because what we can do is leave that number on your calculator and simply add the next one so we're going to add 34 on the previous answer so 134 and it's just so quick because all as we're doing is adding that number onto that and you've got that number on the calculator anyway so you just put plus whatever that is 153 and then plus 7 Uh, and that's 160 I've done that twice by mistake but it is 160 there okay so first thing to do now before we go on to plotting the graph is check the, to see that numbers correct and we can do that from the question again it's a bit blurry for you because it is small print but actually that number there does say 
160 employers 160 so that and that are correct so we can now move on now then okay I'm not going to go into detail today as I say about this is more about Friday but there's one thing I want you to remember here really important that when we're plotting these graphs okay this table is used for various maths one of the maths questions the, ta the exact table is used for is estimating the mean and it's a very different technique to what we're doing here with estimating the mean you need to find the midpoint of this interval here but for cumulative frequency and this is really important um, to remember is that when we plot the graphs we're talking about how many people are below or how many items are below a certain number therefore we need the highest number in that interval because we don't know about midpoints for this we only know there's 44 people less than 25 okay so what we need to do is when we're plotting the graph is use the upper bound the biggest number in the interval so this age here means anybody between 15 and 25 including 25 so that means so we're going to use that 25 there that number there the second number the biggest number in the interval with that number and also this is the first number this is how I remember it anyway that's going to be the X part of the um, graph the X along the corridor part and this is going to be the Y part of the graph so all we've got to do is plot these points forget midpoints that's where people go make a mistake they get them mixed up with um, estimating the mean and it's not the midpoint it is the upper bound we need so um, this this graph here is just those numbers there which I'm not going to transfer so I'm going to plot these 25 with 44 so first job here I, I, this is again I'll go into more detail tomorrow uh, sorry Friday um, but first job is to look at the scales we're going up 10 units is for 20 people there so that's 20 let's just go over these for you so you've got an idea of where these numbers are it is a DIY um, camera that I've got but it does it does work it might not be perfect but um, it's not very good clear print anyway so those are our axes I've just gone over the the numbers so you can see what's going on so there's actually 10 little squares for every um, 20 units going up so each of those little squares is worth two so just be aware of that so what will we need we need um, 44 is the first one so um, with 25 so 25 going along here is there actually it's it's 10 squares for every unit on the x-axis on the age axis so between 20 and 30 and just see between 20 and 30 we need the first coordinate 25 which is in between and we need 44 25 44 we're plotting these on a graph 25 44 remember each little square is worth 2 42 44 there we go little cross little dot however you draw graphs next one 35 with 100 so 35 now these intervals are not always the same amount so just plot everyone individually 35 100 that goes there okay um, 45 134 45 134 so again here we're going to go to 100 134 120 is there 130 is halfway between them and we need two little squares up 30 132 134 so that goes there and the last one is 65 160 there's our 65 there all the way up to 160 which is there so 65 160 okay take your time when you're doing these easy to make a mistake so there's our graph now where do we take it to naught now the thing is that if we look on our graph 
nobody or what are these the pair employees no employer is below 15 years in age so that very first number there is the very first plot actually but that's zero so nobody is below that so we can find 15 naught which goes there nobody's below the age 15 so that's on the naught 15 naught sorry you can just see it all right so that's our that's our graph all right so um before we leave it these are joint now you've got to look carefully in the um in the question as to how you join them okay because there are two things you could be asked for a community frequency polygon or a community frequency curve there are actually three things or you could be asked for a community frequency graph so the first thing polygon if it says polygon we join these up with a ruler polygon means shapes sides so you're making the shapes by putting the sides in putting the lines in curve you need to you need to go through all the points but make it curved okay the third outcome is what we've got is a community frequency graph and that means you can choose between the curve or the polygon okay so today I'm going to do a polygon um, so it, only because it doesn't say either but you've got to read that question carefully as to know which ones you can do do you have the choice with the graph or do you are they being specific in what they want you to draw so there's my community frequency graph in the shape of a polygon and one last thing before we go is that we should be aiming for an S shape okay now obviously it's not going to be a perfect S but the shape of this graph should be roughly an S which it kind of is and it's sort of you're aiming for that that sort of shape so if you don't get that shape and it's all up and down um, you know that you've gone wrong certainly a graph like this going down is wrong because it's a running total and it's getting bigger each time so that's it today folks thank you very much for watching it's been a pleasure as always um, just a couple of reminders before we um, we finish off today first of all I won't be here tomorrow um, so it's a day off for you I'll be in school I will be on um, checking uh, progress on the uh, on the computer of people's homeworks and things but please get up to date uh, use the time wisely on your maths secondly I've got my pixel pen today okay so um, the math I know the math teachers have set pixel activities we've set diagnostic questions mr. Barton and we've also set some quizzes on Google classrooms so remember the place to go is Google classroom first find out what your maths teachers have set and then do those activities following the links and the and the and the ideas from there um, so use that time wisely tomorrow and on Thursday uh, sorry Friday at 10 o'clock we'll we'll continue this idea of community frequency we'll be extending the idea revising what we've learned today and also going over into quartile ranges so just as a little finish off just a little recap to show you what we've done okay uh, the first thing to learn is that community frequency is a running total the second thing to notice is that we're plotting the upper bound with the community frequency okay and that's where I want to take it for today so that's it for today folks being a pleasure as always and I'm going to leave you with 10 seconds of the Pogues, Pogues which is uh, which is uh,